I think I found the sickest Astro content authoring workflow. I'm gonna check this out. Here's my Astro content folder. These are my content collections. There's blog, there's courses, talks, etc. And look at this, command P, new external blog post, hit enter. These are blog posts that I published on different websites. So I published this one on a different website, hit enter, and there you go. Here's a markdown file with the title that I just wrote, slugified, and then immediately inside we have a template with all of the necessary front matter properties, like the title, there it is, the date automatically set to today, etc. I can also do command P, new local blog post, and this is gonna be a blog post that I'm gonna write here on my website, and look at the difference now. This is going to be published on my website, hit enter and check this out. A folder whose name is the slug of the title. There's an index file inside. Here's the title, here's the current date and also a different set of front matter properties because it's an internal blog post. Same goes for the other ones, for the talks and for the videos. So let's create a new talk. Then we need to punch in the talk title, how to be awesome at Astro, hit enter inside of the talks folder. You get the title description, URL, and also the date. And the URL, I pre-populated the youtube.com so that I can only paste the video ID. So yeah, if, if this is not cool, then I don't know what it is. And it's all possible because I use Obsidian. So Obsidian is a markdown editor. It's a free app that you can download on your Mac OS or your Windows or mobile phone, etc. But what's cool about it is that it is offline first. It works with local files. So even if you don't have internet, you can still use it. It's not like the other ones, for example, like Notion. What's also cool about it is that it has an awesome plugin ecosystem that enhances the editing experience. For example, there is a GitHub integration that allows you to push your notes, your markdown notes to your private GitHub repo if you wanted to. There's like templates and we're gonna see that in a few minutes. There are a lot of plugins for automation. You can write your own scripts to automate your workflow, etc. So when you're editing your markdown files inside of Obsidian, there are two views. For example, this is the source view. As you can see, here's the front matter and here's the rest of the article below. But if I do command E, we're going to see the live preview mode where we have all of the properties here. Is external since it's a boolean, it's converted into a checkbox. There's also the images, etc. There are also decent themes for, for the editor itself and for the code blocks here. It is fully customizable with themes, you can pick your own font, etc. So to integrate Obsidian with Astro, there are two approaches. Obsidian works on top of a thing called Vault. So a Vault is where you keep all of your markdown files. One thing you can do is to create a Vault inside of your Astro repo. So for example, you can do Open Vault, you can click on the Open Folder as a Vault, and inside of your Astro website, you can zoom in source and open the content folder as the root of your vault. So this is a very straightforward and easy way to start using Obsidian to edit your Astro Markdown files. But there's a drawback and that is when you actually create the vault, it will add a .obsidian folder and it'll end up in your repository. If you don't mind that, go ahead. In my case, I have something different. Instead of creating a vault at the root of my project, I actually created a sim link, a symbolic link that points to the content folder, but I'm keeping the vault in a separate place so it's not part of the repository and I don't need to track it. I've already created a video about how you can achieve this. This method also allows you to bring in multiple data sources, like markdown sources, into a single vault. For example, if you have multiple Astro websites that you maintain, or you have a knowledge base or a second brain, and you want to bring also your blog posts in, etc. Check out the video. I'm going to drop a link in the description. If you want to take this approach, this is what I went with. I think it's cleaner in my opinion, but you can go as you wish. All right, so let's start breaking down how I achieved the automation. In your settings, in the community plugins, you can see that I have only two plugins, Obsidian Git and Quick Add. And that's basically all you need to achieve this. We're gonna start with Quick Add. So Quick Add is a plugin that lets you create custom templates, macros, and custom choices. Choices are actions in the command palette. If I do Command P and search for Quick Add, 
all of these, except for the run quick ad, that's its own thingy. These four are choices that I created for my project, okay? And by clicking on the little bolt icon, I can pick whether it's going to show up in the command palette or not. Choices trigger macros. And macros are a chain of commands that can be reused. If I click on manage macros, you're going to see that I have four macros. Never mind the UI, it is a little unintuitive at the beginning, but you get used to it real quick. So here are the four macros that I have. One for the local blog posts, one for the external blog post, one for the course, and one for the talk. As you can see, pretty much a macro for each of the content collections that I have, except for the blog. I have two because I have two different blog posts. Let's see the local blog post macro. It's going to run two things. First, it's going to run creating a new file from a specific template that I have, and then it's going to run a user script that I have locally called Slugify. So if we click on the settings icon on the first action, we're going to see the template settings. I have the template set to template slash local dash blog dot MD. And that's just another file in my vault. For example, let's go and check out the local blog template. If we go into the templates folder, we have four, you can see course, external blog, local blog and talk. Here's the local blog template. Basically what we write here will be copied into the new file that we're going to create. But what's cool about it is that it also supports some formatting syntax. For example, here's the name, which is going to be the value of the input that we type in. So for example, new talk, we're typing in some value and that is the value name. And we also have date in a specific format. So we type in the name of the month, a single digit for the day, if it's a single digit. If not, it's gonna be double digits and of course the year. So these are my templates. And when I'm triggering the choices like new external blog or new local blog or new talk, etc., the quick add plugin will use this template and create a new file. But depending on what template we're using, we're creating the files in different folders. So let's go back to our macro, for example, the local blog. Let's go into the settings of the template. The name for the local blog it's going to be index. So remember for local blogs, we kept them in a separate folder where the markdown is set to index. And the folder that I'm creating the new note is going to take on the name that we input in the input field. So when the plugin creates this file, we immediately want to open it. And that's what the template step does. It just basically creates a new file in this directory with this name using this template and then it opens the newly created file. But that's not all. After creating the file, I'm running the Slugify script. And this script is basically a JavaScript file that sits at the root of my vault, but you can't see it now because Obsidian doesn't show JavaScript files. If I open the terminal, and open, for example, NeoVim into the root of my vault. We can see here are the templates, here is the content, and also here is a slugify.js file that exports an entry function that does something. It accepts some parameters and settings, and by the way, the settings are defined at the bottom. I'm gonna drop a link to this gist so you can copy paste this in your project if you want. Look for the link in the description below. So we're basically accepting an argument called type, which is going to be either a file or a folder. And depending on the file, if it's a file or folder, we perform different operations. For example, for internal blogs, we're renaming the folder because the file itself, the markdown file itself is index.md. At the top, I have a function slugify, which just basically returns the slug version of any string that you pass into it. So the folder operation basically gets the parent folder of the newly created file, renames it to the Slack version, and the file operation simply renames the currently open file into its own Slack version. Take your time, go through this script, try to understand what it does. Basically, that's how I have my macros and templates set up. So let's create one. As you can see, I also have the videos content collection, but we don't have a template. So what I'm going to do is just go in, grab one of the videos files, create a new node called video, paste in the front matter and clean it up. For the title, we're going to use the name variable in double curly braces. And we can also either just cut 
only the video underscore ID. Or if you want, you can cut out the whole URL. It's up to you. Then we have the dates. So let's do double curly braces for the formatting syntax. We're going to enter a date and then colon for the format. So we're going to do four M's for the full month name, a single digit D for the date. So it doesn't get prepended with a zero if it's a single digit. And then we have a comma space and then four capital Y's for the year. That's about it. So our template is ready. I'm going to save this file. And now I'm going to go into quick add. I'm going to create a new choice, which is going to be a macro in this case called new video. Let's create that choice. Let's add it to the command palette, go into settings. We don't have a macro for it. So let's just hit create macro. Here's the new video macro, get into the settings. I like to rename these with a capital macro new video so that I can just see them in the macros list. There we go. So the first thing that we want to do is create a new template and go to settings, rename it by clicking on the title itself. And this is going to be video title colon. We're going to pick the video.md template, the one that we just created, enable the file name format. The format is going to be name, which is going to be the value that we provide create in a specific folder. Yes, that's going to be content slash videos hit add. Don't forget to hit add. If you don't do that, it's going to be created at the root. You have to click add and see it show up here and then scroll at the bottom, open this new file and that's it. So here's how we're creating the new file. And we all also need to rename it because the value name is going to be the it's going to be the title, but we want the file name to be the slug version. So in order to do that, let's just go ahead, click on the user script here. Slugify will pop up because the plugin can scan the JS file and it knows it's a script. So it recognizes it. We'll just hit add. And if we go to settings and this is the arguments here, we just need to make sure that it's file. It's file by default in my script, but yeah, just make sure that it's file. And that's about it. Let's test it out now. So. I have one video that I still haven't added to my website. And that is my latest one. This is that video that it shows you how to do the symbolic linking. So I want to copy the URL command P new video. And if you see this error, no commands in the selected macro, that means you need to reload obsidian and open it again. So let me just quit obsidian and open it again. There we go. Let's try that now. Command P new video. There we go. What is the video title? Let me just lazily pun intended, copy this line, hit enter. And if I open videos now, I can see a lazy man's obsidian astro workflow integration. Beautiful. And for the video ID, I can just grab the video ID if I wanted to, or grab the whole URL. It's up to you. The date is automatically set for today. And this works well if I actually did it on the day that I published the video, but I didn't because I was lazy, pun intended. So this is January 11th. This is two days ago. There we go. January 11th. And that's it. That's all I need to do to create the file without needing to copy paste a bunch of things. And now it's here. So how do I get this in my website now? Well, check this out. Command P, git commit all changes with specific message. What's going to be the commit message? Well, let's say adding new obsidian video, hit enter, committed two files. I'm not sure why it's two. Maybe I committed something that I shouldn't have. Oh, actually it's the auto formatting of the distributed tracing block. It's no big deal. All right. So we committed two files or the one that we actually needed. So now in order to push them, command P, git push, and that's it. Let's go to the repo now. All right. Here's my repo, adding new obsidian video. Vercel is going to build and deploy my website. So let's go to videos, hit refresh and keep hitting refresh until we see the new video. Hey, there we go. A lazy man is obsidian plus Astro workflow integration. How cool is that? We didn't even open visual studio code. We didn't open NeoVim. I mean, we did, but that was for a different purpose. We did all of these things through obsidian. Let me just show you how the Git integration works and we're pretty much done. So command comma to go into the settings, obsidian Git you can scroll down. And this is the only thing that I changed the custom base path because I have my vault outside of the Astro repo. I need to set the custom base path, the one that points to the Git repository. 
So this is the location of my Astro website relative to the Vault location. If you opened your Vault inside of your Astro project repository, you're not going to need to do this because the Obsidian Git plugin will automatically pick up the .git for you. You might need to jump out twice to point it to the actual .git because you would be in the source slash contents folder, but you'll figure it out. It basically needs to point to the location where the .git folder is. So there's the workflow. Very simple workflow. You get only two plugins, nothing else. It's just beautiful. I'm going to drop a bunch of links in the description from all of the things that we just mentioned, from the websites of Obsidian, for the gists. I'm going to publish the vault as well, so you can see my templates and the script and everything. Make sure to check it out. If you liked the video, hit like, hit subscribe. I'm going to publish videos like this. So thank you in advance. Have fun writing articles.